have officially hit rock bottom. Hey guys, it's Flower Gothic, and I can't believe it's come to this. I get to talk about Saturday Night Live. Lucky me. I'll cut to the chase. I don't like Saturday Night Live. It's not funny, it's oftentimes cringeworthy, and little good has come out of it. Occasionally, they will do a sketch I actually enjoy. Lifting our voices, for example, is a bitingly hilarious look at how white people quote-unquote celebrate Black History Month via performative activism. That makes them just look even more racist than they already are. Did you know that a black woman, Madam C.J. Walker, was the world's first black millionaire? I did know that, yes. <laughs> I mean, she trying, but maybe too much? <laughs> oh, you're welcome. You know, when racism came back to America this summer, <laughs> I could not stay silent. Today's video is not about a good Saturday Night Live sketch, though. Enter Angelo. When I first saw Angelo, I was so enthralled by how bad it was. It's a perfect representation of everything that's wrong with the show today, and I will not shut up about it until I finish this video. Sue me! So let's talk about Angelo and what he represents. But first, my mandatory disclaimers. Number one. This is an opinion piece. You don't have to agree with me. Number two, however, any and all comments antagonizing me or others will be reported. Please behave yourselves. Number three, do not harass anyone I mention in this video. Please and thank you. Now, on with the show! Once again, I can't wink. I apologize. Y'all might know what Saturday Night Live is already, but a portion of my audience isn't American. So please bear with me as I give a brief explanation of the show. Saturday Night Live is a sketch comedy show that started airing in 1975 and is still going on to this day. You probably know it for its affiliation with Lonely Island and it's not actually that bad at times weekend update segment. Several American comedians got their start on Saturday Night Live, which goes to show how shitty American comedy is. And that's about it. Oh, and they have a celebrity guest each episode. Forgot about that. <laughs> We cut to the fictional yet fancy, I think, El Rey restaurant. I'm assuming this is supposed to be Spanish for the Rey, but that's not correct. It would be El Rey. Inside the restaurant, we see the star couple of the short, Cecily Strong and Daniel Craig? Hey, Flower, when's the Bond video coming out? I'm working on it! In all honesty, I don't know why Daniel Craig is here. Like, why? Wait. You know what? It was because Rami Malek played Lucifer, fuck, Lucifer Saffin in No Time to Die. He and Daniel became BFFs. Daniel ended up going to SNL rehearsals with him after a Starbucks, and the crew just let him have a couple roles. That is my reasoning, and I don't care what you think. That is canon. Anyway, Daniel has taken Cecily, I know they have names in this, but I don't care, to El Rey to see none other than Angelo, played by new SNL cast member Aristotle Afari, an avant-garde lounge singer from generic Soviet bloc nation that, in Cecily's words, 
takes you on a spectacular musical journey. Uh -huh. Apparently, like, all he needs is one word and, and songs just flow out of him. Let's see that musical journey in action. Can I get a one word, please? Um, uh, bicycle. Say for me? Bicycle. Uh, say, say for me? <laughs> bicycle. Bar, 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 bar. <laughs> if I lie to me like this, another time like that. <laughs> if I ever say that mad to me like this, doesn't understand the appeal and Cecily berates him for not appreciating true culture. Rinse and repeat for another minute until a different joke begins. Angelo brings out celebrated dancer Todd played by Rami Malek, of course. Can I get one word for that? Is, is with just one word? Did I say different? I meant exactly the same. If I like to see this for me, not a life for that. If I ever say to me like us, tonight. Rinse and repeat again until this happens. I want you to show me what this is. That's in the same. Surprise, surprise, Daniel finally understands the appeal and is touched. The end. Seriously? It's the same fucking sketch, only with some beta cast member as the boyfriend and guest host Billie Eilish as some shitty Bjork parody. Also with some Christmas shit, but who cares? Who fucking cares? The problem with this sketch is the same problem many SNL sketches have. Pacing. This is how most live SNL sketches go. One, setup. Two, bad joke. Three, straight man reacts to bad joke. Four, Repeat two and three until you reach the halfway point. Five, add new joke to make the sketch seem more original. Six, repeat two and three again, this time with the new joke. Seven, ending. For another example, let's look at a sketch from episode 911, Jasmine and Aladdin. One, set up. Jasmine, Kim Kardashian, and Aladdin, Pete Davidson, are on their magic carpet ride. They make shitty jokes about the movie. From up here, we can see the entire Middle East. You know, where I'm from. This is so beautiful, Aladdin. Two, bad joke. Aladdin is a frail soft boy and Jasmine is dummy thick. I hate myself for even writing this. Uh, I'm just a little concerned that Physically, uh, I can't handle you. If we go all the way, you might like break me. Three, reaction. Jasmine tries to reassure Aladdin. Don't be silly. Four, Aladdin continues his self-hatred about his frailness and lack of sexual prowess. Thus, two and three are repeated. You're a, a lot of women and I'm so frail because all I eat is stolen bread. Aladdin, relax. I really like you. I, I really do. And I really like you too. Five. New joke. Hey, Jasmine is played by Kim Kardashian. Let's make self-deprecating jokes about the Kardashians that no one has heard before. Disclaimer. They all have been heard before. That's my sister, Jordney. We all have J names. And this is my new boyfriend, Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas House. Six. Repeat two and three with the quote-unquote new joke. Aladdin is more insecure about his prowess. Jasmine, I, I don't think I could do this. I mean, I want to, but you know, when you sat on my lap the other day, I think you could feel how much I wanted to, you know? Seven, ending. The two kiss and now Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian are dating IRL, at least as of 
the taping of this audio. Almost every SNL sketch is like this. Can't you see now why I don't like this fucking show? But you may be wondering, why Angelo? If most of the sketches suck, why is Angelo the one that drives me mad? I too was unsure until I saw a comment from one Tudorfish Popkin. If Aristotle was doing Angelo on SNL in the 90s, the character would have gotten a movie. And then it hit me like the In the 90s, SNL had a lot of recurring characters. Mary Catherine Gallagher, Pat, Debbie Downer, and so on. And most of them sucked. They had one joke each. However, many of them were very popular. Popular enough to get movies from time to time. How did those movies do? <laughs> character into a feature-length movie, ain't it? They tried this with other one-note character, David S. Pumpkins, but with a one-off Halloween special. I haven't seen it. Apparently it's okay. Nothing special. So why bring this up now? Part of me wonders if SNL is going to try and pull the shit they did in the 90s have recurring characters that are beloved by audiences and use other media to profit off them. But given how we all live in a greedy capitalistic machine, I wouldn't be surprised if that does happen. We'll just have to wait and see. What else is there to say? Angelo is a shitty character that is representative of everything wrong with Saturday Night Live. I know it seems useless and petty for me to go off on a five minute sketch, but by the time this will be uploaded, I'll be neck deep in my Burning Man and James Bond videos. Consider this a side dish to the meat and potatoes of my 2022 work. Besides, I have a right to go off on random shit every once in a while, okay? And with that, I take my leave. Good night! And